Sunday, August 18th is a big day of racing at Hippodrome 3R. With a noon post time, they present the $200,000 Prix de Tet. It's the first time this race will be run since 2019, Matt. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, $200,000 Canadian purse. Uh, it's nice to see the smaller venues, you know, in the spotlights. Uh, and this is a, a, a half mile track in Quebec, Hippodrome 3R, Hippodrome Trois Rivières. Um, and yeah, they've had some exciting renditions of this race in the past. And it's nice to see renewed here for uh, four year old Pacers. And yeah, they got a pretty solid field with a pretty solid uh, uh, set of drivers, also. Yeah, this should be a really good betting race, I think. And the morning line favorite is Hunting the Last Dollar, who actually has won on a half mile track before. We're going to take a look at the replay when he won the Juravinsky back in May. And uh, he's on the lead here with Yannick Jingra on the bike going to work. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was able to make his way to the front, uh, kept on the gas. And uh, basically the important thing we're looking at here is uh, a stakes win, a stakes win on a half, a stakes win in Canada. Um, and while we're getting we're getting Doug McNair driving, who has driven this horse, quite familiar with the horse, uh, driven plenty of times. Uh, yeah, he's a morning line favorite. Uh, will he be the favorite? I mean, you can make a case for a number of horses here actually being the favorite. But he has a reasonable enough post to, to get out of the gate, and uh, he will be my he will end up being my tepid top choice you, in this race. Are you at all worried about the fact that he hasn't won a race in over two months, Matt? Not really, because uh, he's been in tough spots um, over at the Meadowlands, a bigger track. I think I, I think this horse will be better off actually on a smaller track where he can be more aggressive and just work out a more, more favorable trip. The fact that he hasn't won. Uh, in X number of starts doesn't necessarily concern me because I'm thinking more of the circumstances of the competition. He hasn't won, but he, it's, he certainly has not been bad in any of these starts. The second choice here is an entry from trainer Ron Burke with Act Fast and Tip Top Cat. We're going to take a look at Act Fast winning the Charner at Northfield Park where Matt was live and this horse is on a half mile track winning on the lead too. Oh yeah, we have uh, uh, Ronnie Wren driving for Burke, which is always a... a uh, a, a good combo and you see him on the front end and uh he digs in for a nose win and uh, that's another one that uh, is handy enough to compete on a half mile track um obviously he's drawn inside he ends up with post position two dan dubay uh, who has been driven some horses uh for burke recently especially yonkers gets the call here and um listen he's part of a strong entry probably the, the stronger half of the entry just because of post position but tip top cat is no slouch either we saw this guy uh he was second in the Millstein last year uh we've seen him racing at yonkers with moderate success so we know that a half mile is no problem there the problem there here is the post but uh, yeah they're a formidable entry uh with both horses having a legit chance probably you know with different pace setups and different trips the class of the race in terms of earnings and also a horse proven on a half mile track is number six it's my show who starts from post seven as you can see there we're going to take a look at his last race which was in the mckee memorial he's actually popping the pocket right now looking to try to take home the big prize at the meadowlands on hamiltonian day which this is a nice race but he gets nipped at the wire by rock and roll runa rock and roll runa was six thousand to one i think come up the rail yeah it is my show got nipped but uh, he also did much more work uh, you know, throughout the mile just to get in that position uh, where he was able to pop the pocket. Uh, so I really don't take anything away from his loss. Like you said, he's got no problems on a half mile track. If I'm not mistaken, he was the uh, jug winner last year on a half. So uh, yeah, he's been in, he's been more of an off the pace commodity, which you might have to be here, especially on a smaller track, which you almost definitely have to be here from post seven. But we have the ultra hot uh, James McDonald, who's been winning in all, all over the place, all types of different uh, track configurations. So I'm confident that he'll work out a live trip. Uh, and, and he's probably the, the top name in the race, uh, you could arguably say. So uh, certainly a live contender here, that's without a doubt. Horse I really like in this race is the five, no control. We've seen this horse step up a, a number of times. He won in 47 at the Meadowlands. He's got a 50 and four win at Flamborough. So, you know, we can handle the half mile track. Uh, 
last start out in the preferred, raced well from off the pace, but, you know, wasn't necessarily, we'll call it an important spot. Qualified back nicely. I think this horse could be ready to pop a big mile, and I wouldn't be shocked if he's flying off the gate. What do you make of the, the, the qualifier, the fact that he qualified uh, basically last week when, you know, he didn't have to. He was only coming back basically off one, one week's rest. I looked at his, that just trying to make sure that he's sharp, you know, for this particular race, you know, get him ready. Um, you really, you don't know. I think this is a race where you get in via money earned for the year. So there's always a chance that too many horses enter, though, when it's restricted. This race is restricted to four-year-olds, so it's probably unlikely. But I think they just wanted to get a strong mile into him. This horse, uh, unlike some of the others, like in It's My Show, who has tons of stakes engagements during the year, this mm-hmm. horse really doesn't. You know, so this is a kind of thing where I look at, they've probably been circled this one on their calendar long ago as this is the race we want to win. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. They're, they're, you know, along along with, the, I guess, six or seven other trainers or owners or drivers also circled this race. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he might be forwardly placed, but if you have Hunter in the last dollar in, inside of him, um, El Ray from the rail, who's likely to be pushing off, I, can he make the front? Is he end up going to get roughed up? I mean, that these are questions that, you know, if, if we knew the answers, it'd be a much easier game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you go up and down the line here, there's really no horse that you can definitively throw out. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to argue with you if that's your top choice. If you're getting five, six, seven, or one, uh, I certainly, I certainly won't fault you and I wouldn't book your bet either. Well, it's certainly a very interesting race, a great betting race on this noon card. Uh, Why don't we take a look at our picks, and you'll see that I ended up selecting no control on top. I just feel like this is a race that they've been wanting to win all year. I think the horse is in decent form. I know he's just as fast as anyone in this race, and he's been keeping good company in the graduate, you know, earlier this year. And uh, so that's where I'm going. Act fast. I, I think we'll probably try to come out pretty fast. I mean, he he raced well too, and uh, two starts back on Hamiltonian Day. I think he got over bet personally, and, and you know he was a good play as a long shot because he's always been kind of a sneaky horse, but he's never been a horse that I really wanted to be on as the favorite, so to speak. Um, it's my show. Clearly has class. He's been racing well. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he won. And then I throw in Matt's hunting the last hour at the uh, back end of the ticket. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned it's my show. It's the type of horse that uh, it's you have to use him somewhere. You know, he deserves to be used somewhere, but it, it's he's a tough key on top. I went with Hunt in the last dollar. We're hoping he can you know double up with uh, half mile stakes engagements. Uh, I do like the both halves of the Burke entry. You'll see. Uh, I did not. Uh, I'm not a big super effective player anyway, so uh, I'll stick to trifectas. I like. I think you make a strong case for both halves of the entry. So you're getting the old, uh, I guess, two horses for one value here. That could be coming, you know, from opposite end of the spectrum, one from, you know, battling up front and one from waiting for behind. Maybe they could work together in that capacity. But, um, yeah, hunting the last dollar, I'll stab on top with the one and the six underneath. Well, like I said, should be a great card of racing with a 12 noon post time. Obviously, race number 10. Is the pre-detect. You want to check that out. Good luck.